Hello, my name is Victor Furane. What you're watching right now is a short series that I've decided to begin making. I'm not a history expert, though I am studying it currently, so some errors are expected. Should you notice any, feel free to contact me and they will be corrected. This series is about the weapons of ancient civilizations, giving a more in-depth look into the, how they work, the specifications, and designs and uses. If anyone would like to give suggestions on exactly what weapons or civilizations to do next, well, it will be taken into consideration. For the pilot episode, I chose to do a civilization that most people have undoubtedly heard of, the Mongols. You hear about the Mongols, they're some of the best archers of all time. But most people only know that they used recurve bows, if that. So I'm here to give a more in-depth look at how their weapons and tactics that allowed the Mongols to conquer the massive amounts of territory that they were able to. Before we begin, I would like to thank Aya for assisting me and Alan Fiote for helping me write this. The Mongols used a type of recurve bow called the composite bow. The difference is that a composite bow is made up of materials such as, quote, horn, wood, sin and sinew laminated together. <laughs> Mongol bows in particular used bamboo cores with horn on the belly, sinew on the back, bound together with animal glue. In the modern day, Mongol bows do exist, but because of much of the knowledge on them, how to make them was lost, they are larger than the bows of old, bearing similarities to the Chinese combo bows. I'm not sure of exactly how much a Mongol bow weighs, though I would estimate, based on other modern bows of similar designs, that it would range from 40 to 60 pounds. So, they were heavy, but not enough to limit a... <coughs> Postman's mobility. What is crucial though is the design. The recurve design gives one distinct advantage over a longbow size. A composite bow is much more compact than a longbow, sometimes something which is essential for a mounted archer as it allows them to maneuver their weapon easier and track a target. The recurve design itself comes with some advantages. It can boast a much higher amount of initial velocity than a traditional bow with a longer draw weight. However, a recurve bow also has to be unstrung for longer periods of time, as there is more tension put on the bow itself. The bow was fired using a thumb draw. Uh, which differs from the traditional European style called a Mediterranean draw. The Mediterranean draw uses the first three fingers to pull back the string, whereas the thumb draw uses the thumb instead. I've, I've put up an image right now. I've done this because, well, what I'm using to currently demonstrate it, Mountain Blade Warband, does not actually use a thumb draw. It's a game. It's not really meant for this kind of thing. Now, as you can see, the recurve bows were much smaller than a traditional English longbow. But they actually did quite similar damage. They had about the same piercing. Well, it's not entirely true. Uh, recurve bows in general were weaker than a longbow, but that's because a longbow was meant to be used by foot soldiers. It was made for foot soldiers and could therefore use a person's entire body strength instead of just the arms as a horse archer would have to do. Horse archer can't really put their entire body into it, they have to just use their arms. They can't use their body. This, that was what the recurve made up for. Yeah, and they both really did just about the same thing, could last in just about the same climates, fired about the same distance. Longbows usually fired slightly longer, but not 
Not by too much. Oh, and we could both usually fire it faster. Than the English counterparts. Very good for horse archers who just can just speed around them. Shoot arrows into them. Actually, that was one of the traditional Mongol tactics. Just run around on a horse and then shoot arrows at them till they're dead, really. It worked, usually. To some degree. Another tactic they really liked was... Well, I'll show you. Recording in three, <coughs> two, one. One of the strategies that the Mongols enjoyed employing was they first attacked a castle, fortress, or whatever, engaged the defenders for a short time. And then ran away, baiting the defenders out of their defensible position. The defenders would then rush out and would promptly be slaughtered. Now, with the defenses, well, mostly on land, the Mongols could simply just move into the city and take it. I mean, they would if I was using an actual legitimate software. I don't... I don't think that... I don't... Okay, I don't have actual people doing this, because I don't have that many people that I know. So, the bots I'm using kind of aren't that smart. Um, they would have taken this castle if I wasn't basically using brain-dead monkeys. If anyone could recommend a better software for this, it would be appreciated, because this, this is not a warfare combat simulator. It's not what it's meant for, not what it's good at. Sorry, I, I don't have anything better than it. It's all I've got. Well, in the end, this strategy usually worked. Um, would have worked this time, too. Just not, not all that smart, I guess. Pretty much. Anyways, that's really just about all about bows that's important. I don't know, they're, they shoot arrows, really. They're curved. Good for horses, because you can turn fast with them, and you can turn really far with them, too. Other than that, nothing much to say about the sword. Bows. Swords, well, we'll get on that next. Mongol swords, I don't... There's not really much to say about them, they were just... Just sabers. Curved swords, really. I didn't... Nothing really special about them. I don't... There's just nothing much to say about them. I mean, they were long, because cavalry swords, but... Other than that... There's nothing too special about them. They weren't, you know... Japanese katana, or... An English... Long sword, or whatever. They weren't special iron, or steel, and materials were nothing to... 
Nothing too special about the materials or anything. Really, they did what they needed to. Cut. Though apparently, not as well as Nords. But really, yeah, there's nothing too special about these swords. Look nice on cavalry, because, you know, the cavalry could ride around and hit things. But really, what they were used for was once you got inside the city. Well, you're inside the city now, and you just start swinging left, and swinging right, and killing a bunch of civilians. Yeah. That's, that's just about it, really. Nothing. I don't have any specs about the swords. Because they were really just goat swords. I don't... I don't know. I really don't. I just don't know really what to say, yeah. Should all I have to say. Well, that's it for this episode. Uh, yeah. Like if you enjoyed. Thanks for Aya for being here and helping somewhat. I suppose. Um, yeah, it's the Mongols. Mostly their bows. Something about their swords. Nothing much. Something about their tactics as well. Yeah, I'm not a historian. I mean, I'm learning to be one, but I'm, I'm still not. So, till next time. Suggestions on how to improve this would be appreciated. As well as any suggestions on a better software to use than a video game that came out about five years ago. Because it turns out this software is not actually meant for simulating combat. That's all, and see you again next time. Once again, I would like to thank Aya for helping me with the recording of this, and Alan Fierte for helping me with some of the writing. Though I did do the last bit with no script. Just ad-libbed it. Yeah, thanks, anyways. Comments, concerns, down below. Thanks.